Good morning and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. We are so excited that you're here with us today and uh, we're just excited about the service that we have planned. Uh, first of all, we're, we want to just celebrate and rejoice the 33 little pigs. Uh, we had our... We had our performance in here on Friday night. The kids did an amazing job, and uh, we had a wonderful, supportive crowd. And thank you for all of you from the church who came out to support the, the children's ministry. And we just can't wait to see what they do next. So uh, special thanks to Katherine Halterman for just the wonderful work she's doing. There was a lot of piggy words, and uh, and... A lot, of, a lot of thought and preparation went into that, so we're really grateful about that. Uh, one of the things, we're talking about prayer today. Our theme is a, a Methodist praise constantly. And so uh, one of the things that I wanted to invite you to is, um, is uh, intercessory prayer. And so we have some prayer cards that are out in the, the narthex, and next week we'll have these in the pews. But we wanted to be clear on some of our prayer processes. So um, Wednesdays, Scott and I and Jose, sometimes uh, we get together uh, and we pray for what comes through on these prayer cards. Uh, and we pray for the, the needs of people in the church. And um, this prayer list also gets emailed out to some other people that pray. And so if you're interested in being part of the intercessory prayer team, uh, you can join us on Wednesday mornings at 930. We meet in the faith room in there. Um, and it's usually about a half an hour, maybe sometimes if we have a lot to talk about, it's uh, 45 minutes, but, uh, but we get together and we pray for every person by name. Uh, and then there are also people who just want to pray on their own, and they're part of an email prayer list, and so we also want to invite you to be part of that. Um, but one of the things, especially in the day and time that we're living in, is that we need to make sure we have permission for people before we add them to this public prayer list. So sometimes in churches, you know, people are really free to share all kinds of prayer requests, but you know, with HIPAA laws and all of that, we really don't want to share personal information about anybody without their permission. So uh, on the prayer card, when you see it, there will be a, a place to put your name. And if it's a request for you, you put your name and your request. Uh, and, and that's great. If you're asking for prayers on behalf of someone else, though, we would uh, like you to fill this part out on the back where it says, this prayer is for someone else, and it's their name. You still put your name on the front so we can contact you if we have any questions. But you put their name, and then there's a box to check that says, I have permission from this person to uh, submit this prayer on their behalf. Uh, and then also we'd like it if you would provide us, if you have that person's permission, provide us with a way to contact them because we would love to send them an email or a card and say, hey, we're praying for you, we just wanted to let you know. Okay, now if you don't want this public or this person doesn't want it public, you've got a few options here. You can check pastor only and I will pray for that person um, and we will hold that as a confidential prayer. Um, if you check prayer and nurture team, your prayer request will be shared uh, with the prayer and, and the nurture team too if they need to follow up for that. And then if it's, uh, we've been toying with the idea of putting some of our prayer requests in the newsletter. And so if you're, you want all the prayer you can get and you're totally wide open about it, then check newsletter. And so you can check all of these things. But um, anyway, we just wanna, we, we love that our church prays for each other. We love that people submit prayer requests. We just wanna make sure that we're doing it in a way that really respects every single person. So if you've got you know, an, an aunt that's having gallbladder surgery and you wanna lift her up, um, just call her and say, hey, is it okay if I put you on the prayer list for my church's prayer team? And if she says, yeah, that would be great, then give us her name and a way we can contact her and. Um, and we will be in prayer for her. If you have any questions about this, you can ask me or you can talk to Scott Lumpkins, uh, who's back here, he's our prayer team leader, and um, we would just love to be in prayer for uh, all of the needs of our church. All right, um, so now uh, I think we are ready to stand and join in our call to worship. Everyone. The air is electric with anticipation as we remember the transformative power of God's Spirit working in our midst. Ignite our hearts and our voices to proclaim the mighty voice of God. 
Fill us afresh with your spirit, O God. Breathe in us, renew our hearts, and unite within us a burning desire for a deeper relationship with you. Let us worship God. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. So um, we're going to start out with an um, hymn, and then we, we will go with our anthem. So if you would remain standing, that would be wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Atmosphere is changing now. 
change our order a little bit and uh, go to our new member celebration and we're excited about that because we wanted the kids to stay in here for that because we have some children that are going to be uh, with us today. 
got more paper here. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so I want to introduce and um, present uh, the following people uh, who will uh, join our church today. So I first of all want to invite Mary and Jim Allen to come forward. And then also um, Matthew Kern, Jen Kern, and Madison and Eliza Kern. And also we have uh, somebody that's joining online today. So we are, we are just so hip and cool and, and in the, you know, the 21st century. So we also want to welcome Jeannie Harper, who is joining us online. And so let me just uh, tell you a little bit about some of these amazing people. Uh, you met Mary a few weeks ago because she was commissioned as a congregational care minister. So even before she's joined the church, she is one of those people that already jumps in and is, uh, is just uh, already becoming involved in our church. And so we are very excited about that. And so I also um, wanted to tell you a little bit more about Mary. Um, Mary graduated from Valencia College and earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from the University of Central Florida. And um, let's see, I was going to talk about your uh, vocation a little bit. And <laughs> Mary is a retired professor also from Valencia College. And so she has all kinds of gifts that she is bringing to us. And so her husband, Jim, uh, Jim has a bachelor's degree from Alabama College and UCF. And Jim is a retired writer editor from the Orlando Naval Training Center. And so um, they have been active so far in uh, 50 plus, and I think they've been kind of attending and looking around to see where their gifts are needed. And so um, I know everybody's gonna jump on them right after service and <laughs> invite them to all kinds of things, but um, they come to us by transfer of letter from the First United Methodist Church of Oviedo. And so, um, you're just going to love uh, getting to know them. And then also uh, the Kern family. We're just very excited that you're here. Uh, Matt Kern is, um, is going to be uh, fully ordained this summer as a deacon in the United Methodist Church. And so we're very excited about that for Matt. And he's been serving as a pastor for the past several years. And um, so the, the uh, people who are clergy do not join the church because they're a member of the annual conference. So uh, Matt will be a member of the annual conference. But Jen will join, and um, we are just, just so thrilled about uh, how they've been involved. Jen's already been involved in working with Family Promise with us, and um, Madison and Eliza will become provisional members today. And um, they were baptized at the First United Methodist Church of Sanford, oh, and, Oviedo. Sanford and Oviedo. Okay, so, so they have had some church experiences already. And um, they have been involved in our children's ministry program. And uh, we're just really excited about what, uh, what they are going to bring uh, to our congregation. And, uh, and Jeannie Harper, the series that we're doing right now where we're talking about the five marks of a Methodist, um, Jeannie's husband, Steve Harper, wrote the book that we're studying right now. And Steve, also being clergy, continues to belong to uh, the, the uh, Florida Annual Conference. But Jeannie is an amazing person, and one of her ministries is one of just encouragement and support. And so she's a person who has encouraged and supported me for a very, very, very long time. And uh, one of the things that I love about what Steve and Jeannie do, um, they feel particularly called to the ministry of inclusion, where when there are people who have been hurt by the church, they want to just go hug them and tell them that God loves them. So uh, you'll see them sometimes at, at pride parades where they'll have a, a sign that says free mom and dad hugs. And any, any people who have been kind of um, scorned by the church or outcast by the church. Steve and Jeannie are there with just open arms wanting to let people know that God loves them. And so it's a, a beautiful, supportive ministry. And so one of the things that Jeannie's going to help us with as well is, you know, we talk about our online worship as being like another worship service, another platform for our church. And so we want to navigate how we can stay connected with people 
that are joining us for worshiping online. And so today I think is the first time that we've had uh, a person joining online. And so we're just, we're just very excited about all of this. So uh, I hope you get to know all of these, these wonderful new members. And we thank Mary and Jim for bringing you cake today. We've got a special cake for Pentecost. And even though they're, they're the ones that we're, uh, they're some of the ones that we're celebrating today, they're already jumping in and uh, being servants. So we just have a, a few questions to ask you all, and the response is, I will. So, um, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Amen. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And now if you will respond. We give thanks for all that God has given you. And we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now uh, for this blessing. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ established you and strengthened you that you may live in grace and peace. And so welcome as members of Tuscawilla United Methodist Church. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. And I have some things for you after the service. Okay. <laughs> All right. And now I will turn it over to Ms. Catherine. Great. Good morning. So last week, I told you that today was a birthday party, right? The day that the Holy Spirit came and started the church. It's like the church's birthday. So we're going to be celebrating the church's birthday today, which is Pentecost. So we're going to play up here um, a party game. What do you think? We're going to play my favorite party game, which is charades. Okay, so I'm going to come stand over here. You look at me. I'm going to do some different, um, I'll give you some different clues with my body, right? Charades is when you act something out, but you aren't able to make any sounds. So I will silently pretend to do some things. And you can guess out loud, but I'm not going to tell you whether you're right or you're wrong until I've done several of them, and then I'll come back and tell you where you were right and where you were wrong. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so you were wrong on a lot of them. Um, whew, my goodness, you guys. All of them were praying. You only guessed the last one is praying, but did you know that I was praying with all of them? That wasn't very obvious, was it? No, it's not very obvious sometimes when we're praying. It's really easy to know that this is me praying, but it's not so easy to know that this is me praying, or this, or when I'm playing a sport, or when I'm cooking, or when I'm eating. We can pray all the time, everywhere, anytime, in a really crowded sports arena. Sure. In a really loud car with a baby crying. Sure. In our bed alone at night. Yep. Uh, when we're in the shower. Yep. Anytime we can be praying, we can be talking to God. So 
better than what I could tell you, I have a song. It's an old song, but I really like the words to it. So I'm going to read you just a little bit of the song. It says, let us pray, let us pray. Everywhere, in every way, every moment of the day, it is the right time. For the Father above is listening with love, and he wants to answer us. So let us pray. So when we feel the Spirit moving, prompting, prodding, and behooving, there is no time to be losing. Let us pray. Let the Father hear us saying what we need to be conveying. Even while this song is playing, let us pray. And just because we say the word amen doesn't mean that the conversation needs to end. It's like breathing out and breathing in. Let us pray. Isn't that great? So you can, right now I'm going to pray and we're going to go to children's church and have our birthday party and learn about Pentecost. But when I do, you can, st- while I pray, you can stand up and you can get into any wild, crazy position that you want. You can look like a fountain or a tree. You can lay down or do jumping jacks, okay? So get in any kind of, yep, any kind of position you want to be in. I'm going to be in a position like this, okay? You can do anything you want to do. Lord, thank you so much for these children. Thank you for your love that we can talk to you anywhere, anytime that you're with us and that you're listening. No matter what we're doing, we can talk to you. And we're so grateful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go. Well, as we come to our time for the morning prayer today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, Last week, I gave you all a, um, if you were here last week, I gave you all a gratitude journal. And uh, every day, we were going to write five things in our gratitude journal, all different things that that we're grateful for. And um, in the newsletter, I ask you to bring your journal today, or at least bring the things that you're grateful for. And so we're going to just have a little time of kind of open sharing where everybody can just list things that you're grateful for. If you've not written them in your journal and you want to just say them out loud today, then uh, you're welcome to do that. But we're going to take a minute and just have what I'm imagining is just a burst of gratitude. All right, so um, after we burst our gratitude like popcorn popping, um, then I will uh, close us in a prayer and we'll end together in the Lord's Prayer. Um, So as we share these gratitudes, we will do this in the posture of prayer. So let us pray together. God, we offer these, our gratitudes, to you for what we have experienced this week. Ted Lasso. United Methodist Church. New members. Cake. A clean kitchen. Children. Always blessing. Motivation from the Holy Spirit. Feeling healthy. Great Owls. <laughs> Birthdays.
singleness. <laughs> Loving God, we could go on and on with the gratitude that is in our hearts. We pray that you will continue to grow us in this practice of giving thanks, that instead of focusing on what's wrong, that you will just help us to focus on all the many gifts you've given us. We pray for this congregation today that you will just continue to lead us down this amazing path where we have begun our faith journey and that you will continue to grow us in your grace. Help us to be cheerful and grateful and thankful people who do pray constantly. And so now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward for the morning offering? All right. Let us pray. Loving Father, you quench our spiritual and emotional thirst through the life-giving love of your Son, Jesus Christ. This Pentecost, we immerse ourselves in the river of living water, your Holy Spirit. Receive and multiply our gifts so that all people may experience the security of your everlasting love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, 
and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I loved Catherine's message today, and uh, you know, we probably should talk about her message and my message together, but uh, one of the amazing works of the Holy Spirit is how much we continue to be aligned on the same page without even having a conversation about it. That idea of praying uh, all the time, you know, we're people who really like to compartmentalize things. You know, we have, this is my 10 minutes that I'm going to pray, and this is my 10 minutes that I'm going to eat my breakfast, and then, and, and you see how we do that? We, we put our, our different activities into different categories. Well, a few years ago, uh, when I was having this really amazing uh, renewal of faith, I had a great morning routine of, of connecting with God, and I felt so powerful in this routine. And I didn't realize what had happened uh, until uh, the end of my work day. But one thing that was happening was in the morning I felt completely aligned with God. I was, I was conscious of God. I was aware of God. I was uh, aware of doing God's will. I just felt like that total connection with God. And then I went to work teaching middle schoolers all day. And um, I know we have some middle school teachers here. And... Uh, it's, a, it's a very challenging age of people to teach, and especially when you teach middle school band, because my top class, even though it was my top group of kids, the best players, there were 80 in that class, 80 kids in that class. <laughs> and so um, all day, it was kind of a matter of, uh, of just, you know, dealing with every single thing that was thrown at you. You know, every question that was something you'd already answered 100 times already. <laughs> And, um, and so one day I, I got into my car and uh, when I turned my car on to leave, I heard the Christian music playing on the radio. And it hit me that all day I hadn't really been thinking about God or who I am in God or, to be honest, even acting very Christian. <laughs> you know, that I got into this other persona, uh, you know, to, to kind of get through the day. And I'd forgotten who I was in God. I was not praying without ceasing. I was praying in a powerful way in the morning, and then I was kind of shutting that down, <laughs> and I was pretty much uh, unconsciously saying, all right, God, you know what? You just step aside right now, because I got this. I'm going to manage all of these kids. I'm going to do this job. I'm going to do what I'm trained for. And then I would get back in my car and be like, oh, wait, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a person who has this relationship with God. 
And I honestly, I think that was one of the early echoes to my call to ministry because it started to bother me that somehow I became a different person in my work day than who it was when I was sitting there with my hands raised in praise and, and uh, the person that I, I wanted to be all day long. Now, you know, of course, teaching public school, there's certain things that you, certain boxes that you have to stay in. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to change your heart or you have to change your awareness. I'm wondering if anybody gathered here has ever experienced that. Have you ever had that sense of in the morning you really feel like you're totally in in your prayer time? And then somewhere during the day, you kind of lose awareness of that? Well, anyway, um, I think this, this chapter of this book is really helping us to broaden our understanding of prayer. And the fact that we have this on the day that we are celebrating Pentecost, it really helps us to think about um, the power of the Holy Spirit that is with us all the time. So I wanted to show you the cross and flame. I know you're familiar with this. It's, it's all over our Methodist uh, insignia. Churches that are disaffiliating from the Methodist church actually have to get rid of um, this symbol on everything that they own. If it's on their sign, they have to take down their sign. If it's on uh, any of their, their church things, because this symbol lets people know that we are the United Methodist Church. And so just a little bit about this insignia. Uh, this is a cross linked with a dual flame. It's a powerful reminder of who we are in Christ. It relates to the United Methodist Church, to God through Christ, the cross, and the Holy Spirit, the flame, a reminder of Pentecost, when witnesses were unified by the power of the Holy Spirit, and they saw these tongues of fire, as we just read. The elements of the emblem also remind us of a transforming moment in the life of the Methodism's, uh, of life of Methodist founder, John Wesley, and we celebrated the, this past Wednesday, when he sensed God's presence and felt his heart strangely warmed. The two tongues of the single flame may also be understood to represent the union of the two denominations, the Evangelical Brethren Church and the uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. So the cross and flame was birthed following the formation of the United Methodist Church by the union of the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren Church in 1968. After considering more than two dozen other designs, the cross and flame was chosen as the official emblem. The symbol was formally adopted at General Conference in 1968. And so even seeing that symbol, even seeing that sign, that, that uh, logo, for us is a way to remember uh, who we are in God, that Jesus is with us, that the Holy Spirit is with us, and that, uh, that that represents who we are. So this idea of praying constantly um, from, from this book, and I, I don't know if, if you guys have all purchased the book, The Five Marks of a Methodist, but it's such a beautiful book to read on every single chapter. And so uh, one of the things that Dr. Harper says is that it's not that you're, you're on your knees all day long, it's that your heart is disposed to the Lord, that you're inclining your heart to the Lord. And so he says this, he says, prayer is the way we create and sustain our relationship with God. Now, sometimes we default to prayer for our own needs. Like, I'm going to go pray when I want God to do something for me, when I need something. We talked earlier about intercessory prayer, where we pray for things that we want God to do. But Dr. Harper teaches us to take prayer and put it towards the first mark of the Methodist, to love God, that a Methodist loves God. And so our first prayer is, Lord, I want to do your will. And in this, we take on some dance steps in this dance with the Trinity, where these, these dance steps are the rhythm of our life. We lose ourselves when we're in this dance with the triune God, and it, it diminishes our sense of self-absorption. 
If we go to God only to pray for those things that we want, sometimes we put ourselves in the place of being God. And instead, you know, if, if those things don't happen, then we, we question God, like God didn't, didn't answer our, um, our commands. But instead, when we focus on the relationship that we have with God, and we invite prayer into all of our activities, uh, as Catherine was saying, our eating and our, our walking, and even into our boredom, we invite uh, a sense of prayer into everything that we do, we're not compartmentalizing our lives and saying, okay, now I'm praying and I'm going to get back to my regular life. We make our entire lives a life of prayer. So we also have a quotation from John Wesley. God's command to pray without ceasing is founded on the necessity we have of his grace to preserve the life of God and the soul, which can no more subsist one moment without it than the body can without air. So our prayer is about our total life engagement. Everything, our spirit, our action, everything that we do is engaged in this prayer, this communication with God. Everything we do, we know that we don't do it alone, that we do it in the presence of God. And when we acknowledge that presence, it reminds us, just like looking at the cross and flame, it reminds us that we are not alone. It reminds us that God is with us, and God is more powerful than any of us could ever imagine being. So another uh, quotation from the book from Dr. Harper, it says, The heart of a disciple is a heart of attentiveness, and devoting ourselves to prayer is the main way we confirm our desire to hear from God, and then put what we have learned into action. So I know a lot of times we have, we have choices where we can go this direction or we can go this direction. And a lot of us have a lot of different ways that we think about making those decisions. I know people that are pro-con list makers. Any pro-con list people? You write down all of the reasons why you should do something and all the reasons why you shouldn't do something and then whichever one has the most is, is how you decide. I've always been a gut person where um, if I make that pro-con list and my gut says something different than what is going to be the majority there, I usually rely on my gut. And the way that I kind of see that as being my gut is that I believe it's the Holy Spirit uh, whispering words of, of decision, words of direction, words of guidance to me. And there have absolutely been some times in my life where I have said, you know what, be quiet, Holy Spirit, I am not listening to you. I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> and I can tell you that those things have not turned out very well for me. But whenever I have had this sense that this is the will of God, that I absolutely feel God is calling me to do this, even if it's something that I didn't want to do, it's amazing how it works in my own life. So throughout all of this, what's happening is that we are becoming more spiritually formed, that God is forming us. God is shaping us into the kind of people that just like those people that experience this Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, we feel the transition, the transformation in our own lives. And then we go forth and we shine that light, and we spread that love to other people out there in the world. And in our passage today, it was talking about people from all over. We always want to kind of bring this into a smaller group, but whenever we look at God's spirit and what God is doing, it is always more inclusive, not less inclusive. It always reaches more people than we could ever imagine, not limiting the number of people uh, that we sometimes want to have in our own little private club. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we all gather here in this place. We bring the cares of our individual little worlds into our time here in worship. We come with our hopes and our dreams, and we also come with our disappointments and our failures. We come with the desire to be made whole in God's grace. Even amongst our imperfections, 
God comes to us, finds us, and loves us. When we experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we begin to see our purpose, our fulfillment. We bring our deepest longings, and we have a sense of peace and contentment that even if all is not right with the world, all is right with our souls. God is with us, and God is available for a relationship 24-7. No matter what we are going through, no matter how far we may feel from God. So today, may you experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and respond by turning your whole life to God in love and in gratitude. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would touch each person that is gathered here. We pray that each person would just feel ignited by the power of your love. And God, we pray that this would be a love that we just can't help but share with somebody else who needs to feel your love and acceptance. So we just pray your blessing on this church, this congregation, and every individual person that you will grow us in holiness to be more like you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would please stand and join me in this affirmation of faith. As a United Methodist congregation, we stand together on this Pentecost Sunday, affirming our faith in the transformative work of the Holy Spirit. With one voice, let us declare our beliefs and commitments. We believe, we believe in one God, creator of all things, who reigns with love and mercy over the earth. God is eternally fresh, constantly working for the damnation of the whole creation. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who comes to dwell among us, teaching, healing, and ultimately comes us to sacrifice for the sins of humanity. Through the death and resurrection, we find and the promise of new life. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, active and alive within us and among us. The Spirit empowers us, guiding and transforming us into the image of Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who breathes life into the church, uniting believers across time and space. We offer the scriptures, the inspired word of God as the source of revelation and guidance. We strive to interpret and apply the Bible faithfully, seeking the leading of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the community of faith. We believe in the universal church, the body of Christ, composed of all believers, past, present, and future. As a United Methodist congregation, we seek to be a part of this church's community, joining hands with others to fulfill the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We cannot set ourselves to the pursuit of holiness, both individually and collectively, guided by the Holy Spirit. We strive to live in alignment with God's will reflecting Christ's love, justice, and mercy in our words and actions. We embrace this all to bear witness to the gospel, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with all people. We seek to engage in acts of compassion, justice, and reconciliation, addressing the business of our world and proclaiming God's reign of love and peace. On this Pentecost Sunday, we rejoice in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We renew our commitment to be spirit-led disciples, ever seeking a deeper relationship with God, faithfully serving one another and the world. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide, empower, and transform us 
as we live out our faith and bear witness to God's redeeming love. Amen. seated. And now we come to a time of table where we share together this holy meal together. All are invited to this table and Jesus is the one that invites us all. As we gather we recall that night where the disciples gathered together and Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on every single person gathered here today and those that are worshiping with us online. And also on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ as we are redeemed by his love. Amen. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. If our communion servers will please come forward. All are welcome to this table. Uh, we have some gluten-free elements here. If you would prefer um, a cup instead of dip, uh, dipping your bread in the practice of intinction, we have a few that are here. Um, but all are welcome and the table is prepared for you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this holy mystery. And God, we just pray that you will work through us on this Pentecost Sunday. Help us to feel the power of your presence through this sacrament and through our lives that are gift. We pray that each one of us would just experience this power of your presence and share it with the world. We pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, uh, if our uh, new members will go ahead and go out, and uh, if you can maybe stand by the cake and uh, greet people and let people uh, welcome you to our church, we would love that. And now, uh, hear these words of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.